My name is Teddy Jedwig, and I have been a member of the Sauk County Writers Club for ever. I don't even remember the year that I first joined, but I've enjoyed it immensely and try to write whenever I can. And this is not the only April that has been so unpredictable. This is a poem I wrote some years ago about a pretty dismal spring. The title is, Whatever Happened to Spring? I'm dressed for spring, but it's winter outside. What season it is, I just can't decide. In April, we had days of 80 degrees, balmy weather, wonderful breeze. But now it's May, and we're having snow. Oh, where, oh, where did our spring weather go? My winter things are packed away in trunks and boxes till next year. But I may have to bring them out again if better weather doesn't soon appear. I'd like to be comfortable in the clothes I now wear, shorts and tops meant for weather fair. Instead, my flowers are taking a battering, and when I work outside, my teeth are chattering. <laughs> I'd be out in the garden hell-bent for leather, but I can't garden because of the weather. Oh, Mother Nature, I know you have clout. Be kind to us all. Bring the spring season about. The next poem is called Knitting. It's a poem that tells a story. Knitting. Her name was Patsy O'Leary, and she came from the old side brought along a willingness to work and a strong belief in God. She found herself a place to live, a New York building made of stone, a crumbling brown tenement, but she made it seem like home. Around the flat, she placed some lace, fine Irish lace from her mother, and she cried herself to sleep at night under her well-worn cover. She missed the green of Ireland, its valleys and its ways, for she spent her hours in a textile mill, working 16-hour days. On Sundays, she went to the Catholic Church and sat herself down in a pew. She sang the Latin responses and gave to the collection box, too. If the rest of the day was a day so fair, she chose to walk for a while. She had to pass up the streetcar style, for she hadn't the money for fare. Nor could she walk too terribly far, for she was so very weary. And so she returned to her little flat, this Irish girl named Patsy O'Leary. Lo, on her steps sat an Irish lad. She had seen him at work in the past, and he took her rough little hand in his, and he courted the Irish lass. They got married in May, and he took her out of the mill, away from her woolen knitting machine with its clattering sound so shrill. She learned to keep house and to bake and to sew, but knitting she never would touch. She was asked why once while rolling out dough for sandwiches she was making for lunch. Knitting? With a shake of her head, she straightened the bed and with a glint in her eye, she replied, I've enough to do around here as such, but sure, since you ask, that knitting's a task 
I'm afraid. I don't care for it much. And this one is called Butterfly. What happens to butterflies when they die? Do they fall, weightless as lint from the sky? In passing, you might find one half obscured by a leaf, and you experience the pang of a flitting grief. The fragileness of its beauty was all too brief. For a time, she was suspended in a cocoon, then one day emerged to a glorious noon, spread her wings to allow them to dry, feasted her eyes on a sun-drenched sky. Still fanning her wings, she flew to a bower and sipped the nectar of a just opened flower. Did she ever see her reflection in the drops of a shower? Two few days in which she admired the beauty of God's world before she tired. Too strong a poison in a flower she chose and she nestled down to die in a rose. <laughs>